Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for joining me today. And we are joined by a special guest. This is Robin Porter, Chief Analog Designer from Neves. Great to have you here. Nice to be here, Mitch. Good to see you. Good Thanks for coming here. all the way over across the pond. Yeah. So we did a couple of videos, one where we talked about some of the fantastic history of Neve, and we also talked about this console. Mm -hmm. But a big part of what Neve does is the incredible outboard gear and the range of outboard gear. Mm -hmm. And I think to, to start that conversation, we've got to point out the classic, which is the 1073 that, uh, that everyone uh, you know talks about. Mm -hmm. There have been a number of different, well, that has a long history, and yes. there are now several different versions of the 1073 in the line. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, um, the 1073, I think most people know the history of it, really. It was just uh, started in about, I think it was uh, 71, roughly 71, in a, in a console for Wessex uh, recording. Um, and then um, Neve thought nothing more of it, really. I mean, it became um, sort of meat and two veg, um, if you like, um, you know, sort of a preamp and mm -hmm. with an EQ that we put in quite a, quite a lot of the uh, consoles we made. And it evolved into 31106, you know, obviously there was sort of, sort of different changes on the way with, uh, you know, a bit more high frequency uh, control and uh, high fre and high pass and low pass filters. Mm -hmm. the, the basically the same intrinsic design, really. Right. So that was uh, sort of uh, 8068, and 8068 and 8070 were the last sort of, of those big Class A, Class AB consoles that we made. And then uh, we sort of moved on to the IC based consoles, the 8108. Mm -hmm. And um, and then um, sort of just in the 80s, um, you know, started this movement started, which was uh, uh, tense, uh, to take these old modules out of these uh, recording consoles and then rack them up. And then, as I was explaining to you earlier on in our, um, our talks, was that uh, they would then use those and and the recording engineers would go around to the various recording studios where they'd got the jobs and, and take their 1073s with them. You right. They tried to intensive, and that, that was uh, sort of like it started a a, um, a great big sort of ball really rolling. That right. Did. And, uh, and we we realised um, in the sort of like the, in the 90s, and we started to uh, produce a a 1073 of our own. Mm -hmm. Obviously a 1073 didn't start out life just as a unit that got designed and then that was it. It got refined. Okay, so there had been the first issue of the 1073 and then by the time it had been finished, it was probably up to, I don't know, issue 10 or issue 12. Mm. And it had all these changes to refine it and make it better as it goes on. So you think to yourself, well, which one do you choose? Right, you know, right. to, uh, to you know to to uh, start to remake, and so we we chose one that was in actual fact the real really classic. It wasn't first, it wasn't last, it was right the way in there. But we included all the modifications that were necessary that you know neither neither made mm -hmm. because we still had the documentation, we still had uh, the change notes, and um, so we could read what issue one was, what issue two was, what issue three, what the changes were. So we we had this information to be able to uh, create the, you know, the, uh, this, this module again, really. Right. And then um, the other thing was that um, up until that point, we hadn't really been um, buying any of the um, transformers um, for the output stage of it. We did, we'd introduced uh, earlier on, we'd in introduced the uh, 1081, and so that really, at that point, we had refined and developed again the um, TF1003 uh, mic transformer and the TF1005 um, line transformer, was, as people know, the 31267 and the LO1468. Um, people will know them for that. Mm -hmm. But we hadn't, um, we hadn't done the, uh, the output transformer. And on, those, on that design, um, that's a Class A output design, and, and it's got a gapped output transformer. We found a company that we knew made these and asked them for some, uh, for some samples of them and tested them and found them that they, were, they weren't very good. They weren't, they weren't up to the, uh, the specification that they should be. Because again, you see, we've, we have 
all the specifications, we have all the design notes, we have all the calculations and everything like that. So we know what they should be and what how they should behave. Right, and you were there in, in that era, as uh, they were. No, I not, wasn't not there. All of it, no, but... no, but th 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 those those transformers they were developed. In 1966, okay. 67, 68. So but you, you were in yeah, the I was in 1972. Mid, mid, early mid yeah, 70s. Yeah, they'd already been done, but um, but the the specification for them had been laid down rigorously by Rupert Neve um, with a company called uh, Marinair Radar. Mm -hmm. Marinair Radar were quite an interesting an, an interesting uh, part of the the equation here. They they were. They were they they were in a small town called Harlow in Essex, not that about oh, I suppose about thirty miles from where I live, um, and they they specialised in marine radar, okay, and it was a credibly specialised process, and and one of the things that they found they had to do was that they couldn't buy transformers for their radar equipment, and so they had to make it, they had to make their own transformers, so. And as I was saying to you earlier on, uh, I was going on, on talking to you about um, transformers are a dark art. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you change one thing and it changes something else. You change another thing and it changes something else. It's, it's this incredible balancing act that has to happen, you know, with transformers because they're not, they're not linear devices. Right. And Marinair were, had to make their own transformers because nobody else would make them for them. And, so, and also, again, being marine radar specialists, they, they had to be, like Rupert Pursue, was pursuing the best that you could get in order to be able to get the best out of the equipment that they were making. I mean, not, not up my street, but, um, you know, that, that's, you know, each to their own, as it were. And so um, Rupert found this company and basically got to take two transformers that they made and then put two gifted engineers in charge, one from Neve and one from Marinair, in order that they work together to take these two standard transformers and then make them even better. Okay, so um, that was the microphone transformer and the line transformer. And then Rupert also gave them uh, the output transformer to make. Up until that point, which is a very interesting point actually, Rupert had actually made his own transformers. He'd actually, he'd actually hand wound them wow. himself with another, uh, with another employee um, in, in the early Neve company called Colin Morton. And they were, they were hand wound and wax dipped, okay. And one of the things with the output transformer is because it is part of a class A design, it has to have a gapped core. If it doesn't have a gapped core, then the, the core can saturate because you're passing DC current through the primary because that's the nature of the design, okay? So the gap is very important. If you can imagine, you've got um, a, a second, a primary and a secondary, and you've got a piece of metal that goes in between them, okay? And what you're doing is you cut that to a certain um, width, okay? And that's the gap, mm -hmm. okay? That destroys a lot of the permeability of the material, the, 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 the um, magnet, mag magnetized material, but it stops the, the saturation. But the trick with it to make it work again is that you have to control um, the gap. Okay, so we bought these, uh, these, we got these samples from this transformer company and they, they had very bad distortion at high level on their outputs. And uh, basically the problem lay in the fact that um, the gap that they were using for the transformer was too small. Hmm. And so in the end, we got a transformer with a gap, which was the correct gap. And then the transformer finally performed to its specification, which is laid down, you know, by the company with Marinair mm -hmm. Electronics uh, right at the very beginning. You know, that attention to detail, you know, to get the, 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 the reconstruction of, of the 1073, which was really necessary, mm -hmm. you know, to make, because you wanted it to, be exactly like a classic, you know, it's, it's got to have the, the proper build, it's got to have the proper components, the proper wire, and above all, the proper transformers and the proper specification, and also the proper silicon as well. In order, sure. And all those things come together, you know, to make um, the, the, the reissue of the 1073. Right. Um, once, we'd, uh, once we'd done that and it would be, and we've reissued it, we, we then thought about, well, there are, um, you know, there's some more products um, to 
to have here mm -hmm. uh, from uh, from from the the original work we've done with the 1073. The next one we we, we developed was um, the DPA, where um, again all we wanted with that that design was the, the, the just the, the, the two mic pre's with no EQ, and then just be able to have a uh, a digital interface as well with that that could be used. Um, right. for, for a door recording. I have one in my studio. I love it. Yes. I love yeah. it. It's fantastic for you. Um, yeah. There's also the uh, OPX, which is the eight channel digitally controllable Control. yes. versions. There have been a number of different versions of the 1073. There's also versions of the 1081. There's the Quad yes. 1081. Yes. Um, and also a console that you worked on, the uh, 88R yes. as well. You've got some outboard that comes from there as well, right? Yes, yeah. With the 88R is, of course, um, I had to try and push it on uh, from the VR. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, or the VX as it was then, and so an, uh, an awful lot of stuff was was changed, uh, and also as I said to you right at the very beginning of this talk, with you know it's 5.1 console, um, but one of the things was the the, the microphone preamplifiers. Neve is known for their mic pre's, mm -hmm. you know, and that's you know that's one of the one of um, the things that's so, so key importance. Um, the VR the VR mic pre is, is is fine. It is transformer, but I wanted it to be. I want. I, I try to, again the philosophy that Rupert had always said, always taught me was that you are tr you always try and push the boundaries to make the this stuff uh, uh, as clear and as crystal uh, clear as possible to be able you know to get very good precise recordings. And so I redesigned the microphone preamplifier um, for the 88R. Um, using the same input transformer, um, which is a classic in input transformer in, um, uh, in two to one uh, step up mode, but using a very, very high gain wide band uh, differential amplifier in order to produce the, uh, to get the, um, the gain I mm -hmm. wanted. Um, and that proved very popular. Um, people really like that, that preamplifier in that console and, and to this day we sell most of, you know, uh, most of the consoles we sell we've, we've got those mic pre's in. Right. We thought that that microphone preamplifier stands out because all the engineers were saying they weren't using anything else apart from the microphone preamplifiers in the console. They weren't, they, they weren't bringing in their own um, using it. They, 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 those microphone preamps were perfectly okay. And it, so a lot of orchestra recording sessions uh, were done like that mm -hmm. at Abbey Road and at uh, Capitol or um, Warner Brothers um, or Air Recording Studios in London or, or Mark Knopfler's studio uh, in London as well, uh, where they just use those microphone preamps. So we th uh, thought that um, it would be good to have an LB version of that as well. So there is a, an 88R LB version that faithfully reproduces uh, the microphone preamp from the 88R. Right. So, a number of amazing options with uh, the Neve preamps in different formats and things, no matter what you're doing, there's one that suits. Mm. And then there's also the 33609, mm. there's, which is the uh, the bus uh, compressor. There's the 2254, which is the IO bridge compressor. Yeah. So yeah. full range of outboard uh, was available from Neve. Yes. And speaking of the 88R, the latest from Neve is the uh, 88M yes. audio interface, yes. which yeah. has that 88R or a, or a part of the 88R preamp in it. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah, because we we got such good feedback from um, from the from the ATA R and the ATA R LB, mm -hmm. um, and uh, then uh, it was uh, I think a no brainer, quite frankly, to uh, to use the um, use that technology in this uh, in this little audio interface. Really, um, we we felt it was incredibly important that you know people got that Neve sound, you know, from the audio interface. I mean, we could have just designed a a microphone preamplifier that uh, you know sounded of nothing like a lot of them you know a lot of those audio interfaces have I mean they're perfectly good microphone preamplifiers sure. it's that flavor that's imparted by that transformer um, that is what people want you know that's it to, to be able to capture the sound Right, right. I have an 88M interface that I use around here at Sweetwater, yeah. and it sounds fantastic. It's yeah. such a great sounding interface. Yeah. And of course, the, the full range of outboard from from Neve and the consoles and everything. I mean, sound quality is the mm -hmm. is the high point, or really the the thing that you point out with that gear. And uh, congratulations on being involved in in, in spearheading so many of those great products. Mm -hmm. and what, a, what a fantastic uh, what a fantastic thing. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank and thanks so much for visiting us today. Uh, it's been great to have you here at Sweetwater. And, and wow, just the, the history lesson 
person and uh, all, the, all that I've learned from sitting across from you has been fantastic. Okay. Great to see you. Thank you very much for having me. You bet. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us here today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.